Margaret is my name is Julia and I'm your virtual beauty therapist. I have been beauty therapist for over 10 years now. This is my job, this is my passion and I do love skincare. Today we're gonna chat about Q10 or ubiquinone. This is antioxidant that has actually quite long history. However, in Western skincare, probably if it's not Nivea Q10, you don't know that it exists. Although now you have the Incubus Q10 serum and a few other options that contain this ingredient. But is it worth investing in it? What exactly does? Where it came from? You will know in this video. So I hope you stay with me and enjoy it. If you do so, please give thumbs up share it and consider subscribing to the channel. You can also find me and follow me in Instagram for a lot of beauty tips, advices, ideas, giveaways that I'm participating in, but also giveaways that I do create. So you can win yourself something as well. So let's talk about ubiquinone. Because this is something that a lot of people keep saying, oh yes, I need antioxidants, but they don't really know why they need them. I just want to add on here. So free radicals are these little particles which are very unstable. They have missing electrons. So electrons work in pairs. They love being together. However, when it's just one, this unstable little particle will try to attach towards something else and take another electron from another cell, from another molecule, therefore making it very unstable itself and looking to pair with another electron. So you can get, this is becoming one chain reaction. Where it starts from is actually a very natural process in our body, in our skin. It triggers quite easily from any type of uh, pollution, from skin damage, irritation, inflammation, and a big one is actually the UV light. So our body naturally produces antioxidants. However, when there's too many free radicals, we just can't handle things on time and that's when you have some kind of free radical damage. And this is aging you as well much quicker. This will trigger irritation and inflammation itself. So any kind of redness, sensitivity, acne flare-ups also can be affected. So if it isn't a vitamin, what exactly is Q10? <laughs> it's, actually, it is ingredient that nowadays is extracted from yeast. And this is the reason also why the price of the ingredient is usually higher. You need a lot of yeast in order to extract Q10 from it. So this is a molecule which is quite large, however it is oil soluble. Usually the problem with ingredients is how they go into the skin. Because your skin is oily, waxy on the surface, a lot of the water soluble ingredients just stay on the top and that's it. However, when something is oil soluble, it means that it can go into the skin. How deep it penetrates? Mm, because it is a big molecule, we don't think that it goes as deep. However, most of the antioxidants though go very deep into the skin, so really this is not such a big problem. Ubiquinone is actually naturally produced in our skin, plus you get around 25% of it from your diet. There are foods which are very rich on it, like pork and beef, although it's mainly the heart of the animals. Some fruits and veggies also contain it, but if you're looking for a plant source of ubiquinone or your coenzyme Q10, this will be mainly soybeans, grapeseed and olive oil as well. The natural color of this ingredient is from deep red to orange-like, so this is definitely ingredient that you will see after the 1% line of your ingredients list. This is not a bad thing. This is the standard for this ingredient. So actually it's 0.02% to 0.05% usually into your product. If it's somewhere around the 1%, it is very unlikely and your product will have a very deep color itself. Q10 was uh, discovered in the end of the 50s and it was ex extensively researched mainly because it might be able to improve heart conditions. In the 70s, 
Japanese company called Kaneka managed to create an ingredient which was identical to what our body creates as ubiquinone actually. Subsequently, later on, they created also ubiquinone, which I will talk about a little bit later. But it's safe to say that this is the company that created this ingredient. They have a huge pool of uh, resources, a lot of studies, information about their delivery system, the safety of the ingredient. actually benefit and what else does it do except of being antioxidant? First and foremost, it is especially important in the energy production and this is something that we all need whatever is your skin condition or concern. So what happens is that we need for our skin cells to have a lot of energy because it means that they will be growing, they will be reproducing better, they will be better intake of the nutrients so for the general processes happening into our body and our skin we need a lot of energy where the ubiquinone or q10 works is actually in the mitochondria i'm sorry if i'm going a bit into the biology but this is the powerhouse of our cells so the mitochondria has a lot of different paths and what your Q10 is doing, actually, think about it as a transportation. <laughs> I know it's a toy, but I think it makes sense. You get what I mean. Is So, when you have your little workers, they go onto the train, and therefore, they will very safely, quickly, regularly, and easily be transported to wherever they are necessary. If this train is not regular or not existing, all of those tiny little workers actually will have to stay and wait or walk themselves towards where they are needed. So this will slow down this type of energy production and obviously the rest of the processes of your skin. A very, really interesting study uh, from 2015 and the scientists used mice. So what they did was they reduced the Q10 levels of the mice and they found that it led to uh, less energy, speedy aging, a shorter lifespan of the mice and etc. Once when they reintroduced Q10 into the mice's life, actually all of those become reversed. So not only that this study is showing that we need Q10 in order to function properly, but also that we can repair our body once we get back to this Q10 intake. So the reason why you will see Q10 in so many anti-aging care is that because by all means if there is less free radical damage and if there is more energy into the skin, then it makes sense the breaking down of collagen and elastin to be better. However, most of the studies that I found that are supporting those claims are related mainly with the intake, oral intake of Q10 and not so much about the topical application. Mainly the problem is with the fact that, as I mentioned, the molecule of Q10 is too large, so it goes to the epidermis of the skin, but where your new skin cells are being produced is actually in the dermis, which is too deep for such a huge molecule to go into. So obviously aging is a very complex process and there's a lot of variables, but it doesn't seem that Q10 can actually boost your body to produce more collagen and elastin, but it definitely is protection. So from point of view of topical skincare, it seems that say if I'm 33 and I start taking, um, applying Q10 on my skin, I won't go back to being 25. But say, by the time when I'm 40, I will still look 33. So this is how it works. At least for our skincare, it seems that it is a long, long run type of ingredient. It's not something that can reverse the end of your products. You will see that they're advertising Q10 for pigmentation. From point of view of studies, we do have study that is saying that 
this seems to be the case, but this is actually looking into zebrafish, so <laughs> it's not a human tissue even, and what's left for uh, real human people and clinical trials. So we are still very far from uh, confirming such claims, although some brands might use them. To make things a bit more complicated, I do have to say that there's three different uh, redox states of Q10. This might be a bit confusing, but the fact that this type of Q10 is actually interchangeably going from one state to another is very essential into how it works. Your so train is taking the workers to produce energy and when it's empty, it starts to scavenge free radicals. Pulls them away pick up the workers and this is how it goes backwards and forwards. So there is no truer form of Q10. Ubiquinone and Ubiquinone keeps interchanging one to another and that's why you will see Q10 for two of them. And none of them is better or more special than the other one because as I said, they constantly go from one state to the other. Q10, we don't know about actives that don't work with Q10, so you can com combine this type of ingredient in the rest of your skincare routine without actually worrying will it work or it won't. For me personally, as I already mentioned, because it is antioxidants, you should uh, try to incorporate it into your routine underneath your SPF. So my suggestion is for checking out some kind of serum that you can apply during the day. If you want to use them in the evening, by all means do so. It's not going to affect negatively your skin or anything like this. But for me personally, definitely antioxidants should go underneath your SPF in order to enhance its power. And it's that to rain again i think it's again hell so i do apologize for the sound if you're someone like me with sensitive skin i did chat with a few other uh, people and they say that in the beginning just like myself the initial reaction from the skin was to feel a bit stinking and even slightly numbing if you go over the lips so yes bear in mind Obviously, this is not with everyone. Um, Some your skin, do they work for skin? Some studies say yes, other studies say no. So we can't really say how much it's working or not because when we're talking about any type of supplements and oral intake, whatever gets into the body, it will be going all over the body. It's not just for the skin. So whether it works or not, it's very difficult to say. The first product that I wanted to mention, surprise, surprise, is this one. Quite easy to use. You can use it morning and evening according to the brand. As I said, if you want to use something else in the evening, but definitely it's a great product for during the day. I have to say, I really hate the fact that it's like this, because especially now when it's in the end, it's very difficult and I have to keep shaking it in order to come out. You can see it's like a creamy lotion. It's not runny. But it has very light texture that spreads quite easy. In this product, you will find hyaluronic acid as well. So this will be a hydration and it will add on obviously the cutan into your skin. There's also soybean sterile and soybean extract. So these are brightening actually ingredients. So this is actually around five, six pounds and it is 30 milliliters. So I think it's more than budget friendly. However, if you want to try say something else, you can get actually this one. And I was quite surprised to find it in Boots. This is 50 milliliters. They say it's a replenishing serum. If you ask me, it's like a, it's more creamy like. It has a bit more occlusives, maybe because it has shea butter inside. This one is four pounds and it's 50 milliliters. There is no hyaluronic acid here. And also it has added perfume. It has better packaging if you ask me because it has the pump. So this is how it comes out. Okay, you can see 
this one is not so runny not that uh, the inky list products was very runny but obviously this one has a thicker texture it doesn't stay on the skin as sensation they are very similar but i do think this one has a bit more occlusives so this will be for someone with say drier skin the last product is a different price range if you want to say uh, it is Polish choice and it is their calming serum so this one is around 33 pounds for 30 milliliters obviously completely different price than this one uh, like the Inculus it contains soy and hyaluronic acid along with the Q10 but here also you will see a sea whip which is a very soothing and nourishing ingredient you will see a lot of ceramides you will see cholesterol so this is your Bavir repair as well and you will see licorice which is also a brightening type of ingredient so yes it is more expensive but also i do think it is worth trying and it is a great product thank you very much for watching this video i hope i gave you enough information to consider adding q10 into your skincare routine i think this ingredient just like many other you kind of heard of but don't know what to do with it but not anymore have a lovely day and i'll see you next week bye bye